Convincing your family to up sticks and move to the other side of the world is a tough enough task. But if a previous attempt had ended in a failure of epic proportions, could you pick yourself up, dust yourself down, and convince your family to put everything on the line for a second time? Following a series of hard knocks, John Norris is desperate for a new life in New Zealand. I didn't choose New Zealand, it chose me. My decision has been made for the last five years. But with one failed attempt at migrating... I was in New Zealand for two hours before I booked my return ticket. His wife can't face putting everything on the line again. I cannot go through the turmoil. Can't do it. While a trial week shows the merits of a move... This would be a nice house to live in, wouldn't it? It could mean the end of John's dream. I've got two people in tears here. It's probably mean more than the dream. Lying in the temperate southwest Pacific, most of New Zealand enjoys at least 2,000 hours of sunshine every year. With jaw-dropping scenery thanks to its mountains, glaciers, volcanoes and beaches, it's a popular choice with Brits looking to start a new life overseas. And more than a quarter of the migrant population hail from the UK and Ireland. John Lawrence's first bid for a new life in New Zealand ended in disaster when he was forced to fly home after just one day on Kiwi soil. Now he's considering making the move for a second time. But with one last shot at persuading his wife and children the countries where they should be living, will it be a case of once bitten, twice shy? The Lawrence's trial week begins with over 24 hours in the air travelling from London to New Zealand's capital, Wellington, via Dubai and Sydney. A somewhat bumpy flight's proved too much for a rather pale-looking John and his sensitive tummy. Somewhere in the Tasman Strait is probably my stomach, so if any, <laughs> anyone actually finds it, I'd be grateful if they would hand it back. <laughs> Hayden and Austin have just one thing on their minds. <laughs> I'm looking forward to sleeping. Mum and Kerry Ann is keeping an open mind about the week ahead. I'm not uh, sure what to expect, are we? So no. it'll be it'll be full of surprises. Hopefully, nice ones. John will need to make a quick recovery if he's to set to work convincing his family New Zealand is where their future lies. John Lawrence lives with his wife Kerry Ann and their two sons. Hayden, who's 10, and eight-year-old Austin in Norfolk. John and Kerry Ann were teenage sweethearts. We met at school. Yeah. We met um, 1993, and we've been together ever since then. We had lots of laughs. We still have lots of laughs. That's what's great. Lots of hassles, but we do have lots of laughs. And then 9-11 happened, and the whole world sort of turned upside down, really. The terrorist attacks on the World Trade Center killed nearly 3,000 people. One of the victims was a close friend of John's. Well, her, her name was Carly. She was a friend of the family. And, you know, we were very close. She was a lovely, lovely person. It, it did hit him hard, really. It did hit him hard. Losing Carly wasn't the only tragedy to befall the family. Just over a year after 9-11, my mother suffered a very serious stroke and then in the March following that I had a miscarriage that was really really hard as well deeply trying years took their toll and John developed depression you know it was a very difficult couple of years and I started to get lower and lower and lower it was watching him go through it every day sorry it was tough yeah. Suffering from stress and anxiety, John started to look for a new beginning away from the pressures of the UK. His research led him to New Zealand. I didn't choose New Zealand, it chose me. I was attracted to the landscape. I was attracted to its physical beauty. I was attracted to its culture, the Maori culture. 
In 2010, John applied for and was offered a teaching job in the country. The whole family took a trip to New Zealand to discover if everything he'd read about the land was true. We went from Auckland all the way down to Wellington, and then you go, wow. And you go around the next corner, and you say, wow. You think, how many more wows can I have? John was smitten, and the move was on, with him heading out first to set up home ahead of the other's arrival. Everything about it stressed me out, didn't it? Yeah. Selling the house, packing yeah. everything up, getting it over there. I had a leaving party. I'd said goodbye to all my friends. I'd, uh, Your family. My family. I said goodbye to, to Carrie Ann and the kids. It was very, very difficult. Everything was going to plan until John handed over his passport to the immigration desk in New Zealand. The gentleman said, uh, asked me to see my paperwork, uh, and they said, well, it's not all in order. You shouldn't be here. It was a huge shock. John discovered he didn't have the correct visa for working in the country. I was in New Zealand for a grand total of um, two hours before I booked my return ticket. I was just um, angry at myself. I was yeah. livid that I'd, I'd been so stupid. Really. Yeah. On returning to the UK, the fallout from the failed move was massive. By this point, he'd got no job. He'd got no car. I'd got no job because I'd handed my notice in. It was a pretty dreadful time. Over the last five years, the family have slowly rebuilt their lives. But despite everything they've been through, John's dream hasn't died. I still have it in my, my head and my heart that, that it would be a great place for the kids. That they would be so happy in that kind of environment where there's a lot of outdoor stuff going on. Still bearing the scars of the first failed attempt, Kerry ann doesn't want to risk everything all over again. I cannot go through the turmoil of everything that we went through building up to it and afterwards when it all fell apart can't do it. And the children agree. They're with me on this. John's totally outvoted. Kerry anns also deeply worried about leaving her close group of friends, especially fellow teacher Mrs P. Drop of her hat, she's there, isn't she? We've been through so much together in the last, what, 12 years that we've worked together? Yeah. The couple both know second time around the stakes are higher than ever. It's a huge risk because if it all goes wrong, again, <laughs> I'm then going to have to deal with another failure. And um, I'm not sure how many more failures I've got in me. It has to be right for us all, not just him. To find out if John can persuade Kerry Ann, New Zealand should become their home. The family are visiting Wellington, located on the far southern tip of the country's North Island. The Lawrence's base for the week is a three-bedroom cottage directly across the road from Wurza Bay Beach, a popular destination for families. Arriving in less than favourable weather, the family are keen to explore their temporary home. All right, let's go nosy then, shall we? Oh, yes. Could this be my bedroom? <laughs> Not a chance. They've got a nice place for you under the stairs anyway, Hayden. That's lovely, isn't it? Neither his air sickness or the pouring rain have dampened John's enthusiasm. And look at that view. Good grief, look at that. I still think it looks great, even in this sort of weather. As they settle in, John's happy to be finally spending more than just hours in the land of his dreams. It's magical to be back in New Zealand. It's, uh, I've been thinking about it for well, five years or so, and it's, you know, I'm actually here now. Couldn't have hoped for better. But he's under no illusions he faces an uphill struggle over the coming days. I still think it's going to be difficult to convince Carrie ann uh, to come out, especially after the flight we've just had. It was draining, but it's also a reminder of just how far away we are from home. And the boys agree their mum will be a tough nut to crack. I think it's going to be very very hard for, for my dad to convince my mum to go. I think my dad's got a pretty big job trying to convince my mum. Kerry-Ann knows how happy a yes vote would make her husband. I 
think if we all voted yes, I think he might actually do a little party dance. I think that would be the reaction that you see at the end of the week if we all decided that yes, it was the right option to do it. <laughs> Back in the UK, the Lawrences live in a three-bedroom semi-detached house near Kings Lynn in Norfolk. Full of memories, it's a home Kerry Ann loves. It's the only home we've had. It's the ones the kids were born in, the ones we had dogs in. Can't imagine leaving it for anything, actually. If they did move, the couple would have a budget of around £150,000, and their wish list is fairly modest. Nothing has to be massive or anything, does it? Garden would be nice so the kids can go out and play. I'm not really worried about a smart house. I'm not worried about swimming pools, tennis courts. I'm not worried about underground heating. I just want it to be a home. For John, it's more about the quality of life. I'm not worried about, you know, upgrading. Um, I'm up wor more worried about upgrading my life. To find out what kind of house the Lawrences could buy in New Zealand, today we'll show John and Kerry Ann three properties two on budget and one which could be their dream home. Only after they've seen each one will they discover its value. For their first viewing, the family head 20 minutes north of Wellington to the Stokes Valley area of Lower Hutt. It's an area known for its scenery and serenity and could be an ideal location for a young family. From the outside, first impressions could be better. Not overly enamoured with the uh, overhang, but um, I'm sure it's lovely inside. Once up the steep staircase, though, John's outlook improves. It's a proper Kiwi house, isn't it, nestled in the, in the hillside? And living amongst the trees gets the thumbs up. That's nice, isn't it? Wow. Nice little place to have your breakfast. Having all the, the ferns around and the beautiful greenery around you, I, I love it. The bedrooms are the subject of some robust discussion. It's bigger than the rooms in our house, isn't it? This is bigger than your room. Yeah, it's not bigger, no, it's not bigger than Hayden's. It's bigger this than Austin's, though. No, this is bigger than Hayden's. If you think... Now, listen, because you... Don't forget, you've got a, the sloping seam which comes much lower. You're outnumbered. And if there's a bed here... let's go. <laughs> It's clear John and Kerry Ann aren't singing from the same hymn sheet. I could see myself living in somewhere like this. It's not really to my taste at all. I don't like it at all. But other than yeah, that, it's, it's great. Oh dear. Refusing to give up, John has plans for the basement. I think I see a recording studio here. Oh dear. <laughs> I think I see somewhere to actually put a car rather than fill it with rubbish. Maybe even the pool table. I'll get my coat. <laughs> <laughs> Inside has failed to completely wow Kerry Ann. How will outside fare? The garden is a little bit too small for my liking. Yeah. Oh, it's not round and a lot. Big, it's nice. It's big enough for what we would want, isn't it? Then John spots a surprise. Is that one if you can get up on that? Probably bit up there? still lose it. Yeah, I can't resist it. Let's go up there. <laughs> Come on. Oh, look, there's enough path up there as well. Go on. So the garden is actually pretty huge. And before you know it, the boys are in their element. This is unbelievable. <laughs> and John's pleased as punch. I could see myself here, that's for sure. This property's received a mixed response. But could they afford it with their £150,000 budget? So how much do you think it is, Austin? Uh, £170,000. £170,000. Um, £250,000. Yeah, £250,000. I think it's yeah. about £160,000. I'd say £140,000. <clears throat> Turn it over. over. That's just £1,000 over budget. <laughs> so that's roughly the same as ours then. So I still think, in ter terms of the setting, it is amazing. Well, onwards and upwards. Kerry Ann doesn't seem impressed so far. So will Property 2 turn things in John's favour? Staying in the Stokes Valley area, just a few minutes away, is this three bedroom 1950s weatherboard home. Despite the outside not immediately grabbing John... A bit more closed in, isn't it? Inside, the vibe is more positive. Very spacious. Yeah. Much more space. Much lighter as well, isn't it? Yeah. Not quite as dark as the other house, is no. it? Decent-sized kitchen for yeah. us, isn't it? It's nice. Yes. It's much lighter, isn't it? 
Yeah. I think that's the thing that hits you, isn't it? It's, it's just homely. It's, yeah. Yeah. It's not as large lounge, but it's more homely. The light theme continues into the bedrooms. It's a lot brighter than the other one. Um, I don't know, it just feels airy, even though the room's probably not much bigger than the last house. It does feel more spacious and more airy. Yeah. And Kerri-Anne could be coming round. Yeah, maybe the, this one's more livable in for me than the maybe. other one. It's a relief to hear you say that, because, uh, yeah, I, I could see that the last house wasn't, no. wasn't really to your, to your liking. Currently used as an office, the largest of the three bedrooms is a real crowd pleaser. Ooh. Oh, this is bigger, isn't it? Oh, this is a bit more like it. This is good. It's got a lot of, a lot of, lot of space, isn't it? Yeah. It's nice and light again, isn't it? Yeah. All the light coming through that window again. Outside, the garden gets a thumbs up from John and Kerry Ann. That's a decent enough size, isn't it? Yeah, it's a nice size garden. Doesn't look too difficult to maintain either. Even if the boys feel it's missing a certain something. The other garden a bit. Better than this garden. Yeah, it'd be better if we join them together. Yeah, what you want is a tree house and a swing in this garden, it'll yeah. be fine. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So far, so good. That is until a furry friend from next door makes itself known. Dogs. God, those oh, dogs. Those dogs are giving it a bit of welly, aren't they? Excellent. Yes. Not sure I could cope with that it's dog barking all day. Though. And off he goes. Not the best way to end a viewing, but barking dogs aside, the house has gone down well. So could they afford it with their £150,000 budget? If we were to move over, this would be a nice house to live in, wouldn't it? It's yeah. probably out of our price range. I feel a little bit hemmed in by the, the close proximity of the other houses. But it is a lovely house. I reckon it's going to be a lot more than the last one. Yeah, the last one was 151, wasn't it? Um, I think it's going to be nearer 200,000. Go on in, go on in Hayden. Go on Hayden. Um. That's £7,000 over budget. I am surprised. That's doable. Mm. I, I really did think it would be a lot, a lot more. More so on this house than on the last one. Yeah. 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 For this house, I would actually consider being able to move here and live here. Yeah. So you could see yourself moving over here with this? No, I can see me living in this house. All right, OK. <laughs> <laughs> it's a start. John could be edging closer to persuading Kerry Ann. Will Property 3 seal the deal? Just a few doors down on the same road is this four bedroom home, tucked away in a private setting in the bush. Oh, we're out in the sticks here, aren't we? John's a fan of seclusion. You like the fact it's hidden, don't you? I do. I like it. It's, uh, it's out of the way. And already he can imagine it as a home. It's just so peaceful, that's what yeah, I can't get over. Yes. Oh, I, could, I could see myself here. Yeah. Could you? Guitar on the porch. <laughs> <laughs> Hillbilly. Inside pleases the whole family. Oh, wow. Mm. Wow. wow. It's a nice living space, isn't it? Yeah. Especially John. It's lovely, isn't it? Yes. It's quite bright, isn't it? Yeah. Nice size as well. Yeah, I like it. The family bathroom wins praise. Oh, it's a bigger bathroom. It is a bit bigger, isn't it? Yeah. It's a reasonable it's a bigger size. Bathroom. Until they realise the bath might be more suited to other worldly creatures. It is <laughs> kind of strange. I get the feeling that New Zealand baths are smaller than ours. Or that New Zealand people are smaller than us. <laughs> they do have hobbits. Stepping outside, everyone's breath is taken away. Look at that. Look at that. Wow. Lovely, isn't it? Isn't that beautiful? It's amazing, isn't it? These lovely trees. What a stunning setting. And Kerry Ann can envisage the alterations she would make. Yeah, it'd be nice if you had this bit grassed and cleared the path over there. Are you making plans? No. Nice try, John. So will this house fall within their £150,000 budget? Oh, right. Oh, I think this house is going to be massively out of our price range and I don't think we're going to be able to afford it. Maybe 220000 220, I don't know, 240. Right. Shall we see? Yep. yep. Oh, my ah. God. That's £26,000 over budget, but... 
That's surprising. It's a lot cheaper than we thought it would be, isn't it? Yeah. Well, that is brilliant, actually. That's, that's not much far out of our range. She just said you had no. again. That makes me feel really confident about a move, yeah. depending on what what job opportunities would be out here. And what price our house is. And what, yeah, and what house prices are, well, we get. That might be possible. It's been a mixed day on the property hunt front. Property One didn't have the best curb appeal, but impressed with its secret garden. Property Two's light interiors hit the spot, but the barking dog didn't. And Hideaway Property 3 got top marks for peace and quiet and its wow factor garden. So when it comes to the boat, will the family choose properties at home or away? Based on the properties we've seen today, our vote goes to... New, UK. New Zealand. Can't decide. <laughs> I think it's a bit of a no-brainer, personally. Nothing grabbed me worth moving and leaving what we've got for. Travel halfway around the world to something that I don't really feel comfortable in. So it looks at the moment and it's two and a half to one, one and a half. half. <laughs> so New Zealand's winning at the moment. <laughs> John knows he needs to start winning Kerry Ann around. Finding good jobs with decent wages in New Zealand could do the trick. Back in the UK, John runs his own business, offering specialist music classes to students of all ages. I love my job at the moment. As long as I'm doing something creative every day, then, I, then I'm happy. But I never quite know what I'm doing day to day, which is one of the great things about my job. In New Zealand, he expects he'll have to return to his former job of working as a college lecturer. It'll have to be in further education again, or the tertiary sector, as it's known over there. Because I have to work for a while and get my citizenship before I can then uh, start a business, which is what I'm doing now. I think you're moving country. Why am I moving country? Well, I might be, I might not be. I don't know. Do you think I should move? No. No, OK. I think I know someone else who's got that kind of view as well. Kerry Ann's a primary school teacher, which brings mixed fortunes. I love my job. Um, I don't like all the pressures and the mass amounts of paperwork, but I do actually enjoy the time in the classroom with the children. She's hoping the teaching profession in New Zealand is less pressured. I'm, I'm hoping to find a job that will give me some sanity, yes, <laughs> and a lot less stress. <laughs> it's an important day for both John and Kerry Ann as they set off to discover what work opportunities there might be in New Zealand. John heads to the New Zealand School of Music at the Victoria University of Wellington. After a sleepless night, he knows today has to come up trumps if he's to bring Kerry Ann around to his way of thinking. I've been up throughout the night thinking about what might happen, what might transpire. If Kerry Ann doesn't vote for New Zealand today, I think that would be the end of it and that will be a real kick in the teeth. Kerry Ann's visiting Silver Stream Primary School, just down the road from the houses the family viewed. I think John's hoping that today will change my mind regarding jobs in New Zealand and hopefully change my mind overall, but there's no point uprooting everything in the UK to come over to New Zealand and not be able to manage. John meets musical director Ewan Murdoch, who gives him a tour of the university's performance spaces, recording studios and collection of instruments from around the world. Just being here now, I, I can... My knees are going a bit. <laughs> <laughs> and John can't resist having a go. See if you can do a scale, so you go one, a, one ahead of the other. OK. You're an absolute <laughs> natural, John. John's eager to know what music teaching opportunities might exist for someone with his level of experience you would struggle to find a job at a university level. Mm -hmm. um, however, the community college experience you have, in my opinion, directly relates to um, you know, institutes, polytechnics and institutes of technology, yes. of which there are a number through New Zealand. 
what do you think my salary expectations might be? My sense is that given your leadership already in that, in that area of work uh, back in the UK that you would be in the senior band mm -hmm. uh, which would put you somewhere between 70 and 90,000 New Zealand dollars. That's about £35,000, over double what he currently brings home on a self-employed basis in the UK. But what about the all-important work-life balance? New Zealand is a fabulous place to bring up a young family. Um, you have to work hard, there's no question about that, but there's also an expectation that families are very important, and certainly within this school, um, I like to think that families come first. It's exactly the kind of news John had been hoping to hear. And he's anxiously hoping Kerry Ann's day is as encouraging. I don't really know how Kerry Ann's going to get on. I'm hoping she'll be open minded and, and positive. So, fingers crossed. School principal Mary shows Kerry Ann around and introduces her to expat deputy principal Zach Mills. She wastes no time in grilling him on how he's found teaching in New Zealand. And the work-life balance is better? Yes. Certainly the schools that I've worked in, they really want their teachers to have that work-life balance, to go out and play their sport or do the things that they really love because they find that they bring that passion and energy back into the school. Next, she wants to know if there are jobs with her name on them in New Zealand. Oh, absolutely, because I see that you've been teaching for 16 years, is that right? Uh, uh, yeah, too long. Round about yes, that, yes. yes. <laughs> and of course you've got some real strengths in PE and in music. And of course when we're looking to employ new teachers, we're looking at what else they can bring to the school, not just the reading, writing and maths. It's all sounding very promising, but then Kerry ann asks about the hard cash. How much would she earn? Roughly, you would be starting on round about 50. Okay. Okay. So, but then you'd work up through the steps. That's around £22,000, significantly lower than the £30,000 she currently earns at home. Okay. That's mm. quite a bit lower than what I am on at the moment. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So, based on everything they've discovered today when it comes to work, Will the couple choose home or away? New Zealand. Undecided. Well, that could have been worse. <laughs> <laughs> it's just that massive pay cut that worries me about the work. It's not all about the money, is it? It's, no. It is also about the quality of life when you're at work. And if I would be earning a bit more, then it might... Balance maybe that out. might balance things out a little bit. Yeah. I did think that if you voted know that it would be the end of it, the whole thing, to be honest. Mm. So the fact that we were edging towards maybe a yes <laughs> uh, is, is positive. Gives me a little bit of hope. With Kerry ann yet to cast a vote in favour of New Zealand, it looks like John's facing an uphill struggle if he's to stand any chance of realising his dream. With the sun shining, the family head out to explore the lifestyle Wellington could offer them. And for John, it could be the ideal opportunity to get Carrie Ann on side. At home, much of family life revolves around football. So the family start their day with a training session with the juniors at Seaton FC. Austin, I like your top. Fantastic. This You're all right. And while mum and dad meet some of the parents on the sidelines, it yeah. seems like a lovely area to live as well. I mean, oh, it is. Austin and Hayden are immediately at home kicking about with their new Kiwi friends. Oh. We came out ten years ago, and I mean, I didn't have my children when we came, so it was a little bit lonely for me. But um, you, you know, you meet so many families through your kids and the clubs and activities, and mm -hmm. we just spend our life outdoors on the beach. It's the kind of experience John had been hoping for. Today has been fantastic. You know, we, we had a chance to see what our lives could be like if, if, we were, if we were here. And everywhere that you go, people are friendly. Kerry Ann's happy too. Seeing the kids totally fit in, being greeted by the parents that were there, being spoken to quite happily, you know, it was really nice and they just kind of welcomed me with open arms. Yeah.
Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. Next, the Lawrences head into Wellington for a spot of lunch beside the harbour, giving the family time to catch up on how the week's going. What about this morning? Do you think the training was better? Than it was? Yeah, it was amazing. No, it wasn't. I don't, I don't think it was better. It was equal. It was equal. It was a lot more friendly, though. For Kerry Ann, the week's improved as it's gone on. Gradually, the week has got better for me, whereas I think John started off on a high and will continue on a high. But John accepts she's not entirely sold. This week's been a bit of a mixed bag for Kerry Ann. Um, I think she's seen that the lifestyle that she could have, or we could all have here, it, it would be superb. But I, I, I'm not sure, I'm not totally sure she can look past that huge pay cut she'd have to take. I'm not sure at the moment which way I'm going to go. It's, it's, it's borderline, which is a positive, I suppose, on the first day, isn't it? But yeah, still not sure if I'm swayed enough or not. And the boys also know Mum's yet to be convinced. I don't, I don't think, think Dad's quite, quite done it. Quite convinced her to come, no. Keeping his thoughts to himself, even John's beginning to realise just how much he'd be leaving behind in the UK. I, I know that I have wonderful friends at the moment who have supported me through some really horrible, horrible times. And I have such a a heightened appreciation of what friendship really means now. Could it be just a blip for John or a complete change of heart? Despite his disclosure, it has been a fun day out for all the family. So when it comes to lifestyle, how will they vote? Based on the experience we've had today, our votes are... New Zealand. New, Zealand. New Zealand. It's a clean sweep. Anybody got New Zealand? <laughs> <laughs> Are you slightly happy there, honey? Back of the net. <laughs> Kerry Ann's first vote for New Zealand could mean John's dream isn't over yet. But if it's to become a reality, the finances will need to stack up. The couple feel their house in the UK is worth £160,000. We sent round to estate agents to give their valuations. This is actually a property that I put on the market a couple of years ago. Oh, good size room, nice fireplace and great views. And a broken, broken picture glass. frame. <laughs> Don't. Since I was here last time, the kitchen's been replaced, which is great, um, to a modern high-gloss um, unit, so it looks really, really modern. Main bedroom, and again, dual aspect, which is really good. Makes the room really nice and light. Um, I'd probably remove this as it impedes a bit in the room. We could remove that, but then we would uh, have no clothes. That's true. <laughs> oh, so this is bedroom two. It's obviously got a lot of things in here, including a bunk bed, wardrobe, and uh, wildlife, um, <laughs> but you could uh, alter this around and easily accommodate a double bed in here, so it's a nice size bedroom. Where is Austin's bedroom? It's quite compact, but it's got everything that you need in it. Bed, wardrobe, drawers, games box, but it's got beautiful, beautiful views to the rear. Put a lawn over to the side, but of course the main thing is the open view at the rear, which is what so many people want when they live in the country. Great. I would suggest marketing the property at 159950 but for a quick sale I would suggest marketing at 155 In the current market conditions we'd probably recommend a marketing price of 159950 uh, but to go no lower than 155 Price has gone up slowly? Yes. By about 10 grand? Yeah. That's good. Maybe what a lick of paint will do. It is. The valuations go down well. And next, the couple sit down to compare the cost of living in New Zealand with the UK, starting with the weekly food shop. Let's see how skint we are. See, we drink milk by the bucket load, and that's more expensive already, isn't it? Um, almost, double, almost double the price, look. We get through loads of ham, don't we? Well, we won't if we're here, will we? <laughs> right. I've got it at £117.96. Look at an extra £27 a week. With groceries coming in at around £100 a month more in New Zealand, John puts on a brave face. That's not great news, but not it's not dreadful, is it? Next, the couple move on to examine their bigger outgoings, basing their figures on the dream home we showed them. The mortgage is massively different, isn't it? It's an extra 300 quid gone already. And look, look at petrol. Look how much cheaper that is. 
that's that's, quite that's good. Four hundred and sixty-two pounds forty-nine worse off a month. In total, the couple work out they'd be spending nearly £500 a month more in New Zealand. John's speechless, but once they take into account how much they might earn in New Zealand, the figures begin to look better. Yes, I can feel the smug smirk coming right now. £629, 51 pence a month better off. So, <laughs> should we get the tickets booked? Their sums show they'd be better off to the tune of seven and a half thousand pounds every year. It's made my decision a lot harder. You can't argue with that, can you? <laughs> I can just feel the smug coming this way. So will it be another clean sweep as the couple choose between finances in the UK and New Zealand? Based on the figures we've seen today in the reality check, our vote goes to... New, New Zealand. Zealand. <laughs> <laughs> you can't argue with the figures, can you? When you think about it, you know, 600 odd pounds a month better off is a no brainer. I attempt to do a little lap of honour around Please the garden. <laughs> Such a significant boost to their finances has been impossible to argue with, helping John's dream gain yet more momentum. But the week's far from over, and the family now face what could be the biggest hurdle to a move. Having discussed it with the children first, they sit down to watch messages from friends and family back home together. Hi. Hi. Hi, Hi guys. Hi there, all of you. Hi, John. Hi, Kez. I love her to bits. Yeah, she's one of my best friends, and... Yeah, she's very loyal and, yeah, she's a great friend. She's a lovely lass. Mad, but lovely. <laughs> John is really fun to be with, really outgoing. Hayden's the more grown-up one. Um, he looks very much like John and, and acts very much like John when John was younger, whereas Austin acts like John is now, a bit crazy <laughs> and a bit... <laughs> <laughs> Lively, entertaining. That very accident pro. Very accident pro, yes. Yeah, but um, good kids, really good kids. Good kids. Yeah. I, I really didn't want them to go, did I? I was... No, N Nikki, Nikki was in a state of depression for weeks on end. She used yeah. to be waking up in the night because she didn't want them to go and I had to be consoling her. We would never be able to take them to see him over there. That would be an impossibility. It's just the distance between us. You, you, I wouldn't be able to do that. The one thing you want to do is watch your grandchildren grow up, which we're not going to be able to do. Uh, it's going to be a big loss to us all. It's the birthdays and the Christmas and the Easter and the, you know, when we're all supposed to be sat around a table, aren't we? And that would be the hardest time. Really. Make the right decision based on what you want, not what any other people want. And we think it's a great idea for you. Uh, and a great opportunity, so make the right decision. We really don't want you to go, but if you have to, if you want to follow your dream, you've got to do it. If you decide that New Zealand is the place for all of you, then you go um, with my best wishes. I'd be losing part of me because of... I won't change anything because I think if they want to go, it's right. Okay. I don't know what to feel. Well, I, I know how I how I feel, but I've got two two people in tears here who um. It'll probably mean more than the dream. Just as the balance seemed to be tipping in favour of New Zealand, messages from home have been a tough reminder of how hard it'd be to leave friends and family behind. 
With their week in Wellington drawing to a close, both John and Kerry Ann are struggling with conflicting emotions. So, where will the Lawrences decide their future lies? When the Lawrences arrived in Wellington seven days ago, John was desperate to see if New Zealand could deliver second time round. The whole week's been fantastic. We've had lots of good things, like uh, I still think we'd have a good house over here and good, good uh, financial prospects. But has New Zealand shown Kerry Ann enough to sway her? I'm still kind of torn between the fact of, yes, it could work, then it could be fantastic and it could be for the best, but if it doesn't, you know, what are we losing out on that we're leaving behind in the UK? I'm still torn between the two things. Seeing messages from home brought focus to the thorny issue of leaving loved ones behind. Just watching your dad get upset is not really that easy, is it? Um, and friends as well that, you know, we really do heavily rely on and they're always there for us, so to find that and get that again somewhere else is going to be tricky. Well, I know it took a lot out of her. And Austin was clearly upset. She only usually cries when she really doesn't want to do it or she's, she's really sad. And she cried then, so... John faces the ultimate dilemma, having to choose between his dream and family. I wish I could explain what's going through my head at the moment. Um, I'm massively confused. I've been thinking about New Zealand for five years or so, and I'm here now, and yet I feel further away from it than I ever have. But on the other hand, I feel closer to my family than I've ever felt before. So where will the family finally decide their future lies? My decision has been made for the last five years, and when I, now I have to kind of formalise it by turning the card. Um, all of a sudden, it's not so straightforward. We've had a great week. Based on the experiences we've had this week, our vote goes to... UK! Undecided. Undecided. Okay. Why is yours undecided? Because it has to be right for all of us, not just for me. Yeah. Um, seeing Austin so upset brought it home that it might be my dream, but it can't be, it has to be all of us. So, um, but having said that, I've got a dream family. Why did you change your mind? The video changed my mind. Why? I just didn't want to leave everyone. Okay. What about you, Austin? I just really didn't want to leave my friends and family. It's time to move on, and it's time to think of someone other than myself. In the end, his week in New Zealand has shown John the dream life he's been chasing may actually lie closer to home. It's been a long journey for the Lawrence family, but wherever they go on to spend their future, we hope it's a very happy one. This year, there's more to Wanted Down Under. See more from the family's week in Wanted Down Under Extra and find out what's happened since their return to the UK. Go online at bbc.co.uk forward slash Wanted Down Under. Thanks. Emergency Rescue Down Under. Convincing your family to up sticks and move to the other side of the world is a tough enough task. But if a previous attempt had ended in a failure of epic proportions, could you pick yourself up, dust yourself down and convince your family to put everything on the line for a second time? Following a series of hard knocks, John Norris is desperate for a new life in New Zealand. I didn't choose New Zealand, it chose me. My decision has been made for the last five years. But with one failed attempt at migrating... I was in New Zealand for two hours before I booked my return ticket. His wife can't face putting everything on the line again. I cannot go through the turmoil. Can't do it. While a trial week shows the merits of a move... This would be a nice house to live in, wouldn't it? It could mean the end of John's dream. I've got two people in tears here. 
will probably mean more than the dream. Lying in the temperate southwest Pacific, most of New Zealand enjoys at least 2,000 hours of sunshine every year. With jaw-dropping scenery thanks to its mountains, glaciers, volcanoes and beaches, it's a popular choice with Brits looking to start a new life overseas. And more than a quarter of the migrant population hail from the UK and Ireland. John Lawrence's first bid for a new life in New Zealand ended in disaster when he was forced to fly home after just one day on Kiwi soil. Now he's considering making the move for a second time. But with one last shot of persuading his wife and children the countries where they should be living, will it be a case of once bitten, twice shy? The Lawrence's trial week begins with over 24 hours in the air traveling from London to New Zealand's capital, Wellington, via Dubai and Sydney. A somewhat bumpy flight proved too much for a rather pale-looking John and his sensitive tummy. Somewhere in the Tasman Strait is probably my stomach, so if any, <laughs> anyone actually finds it, I'd be grateful if they would hand it back. <laughs> Hayden and Austin have just one thing on their minds. <laughs> I'm looking forward to sleeping. Mum and Kerry Ann is keeping an open mind about the week ahead. I'm not uh, sure what to expect, are we? So no. it'll be it'll be full of surprises. Hopefully, nice ones. John will need to make a quick recovery if he's just set to work convincing his family New Zealand is where their future lies. John Lawrence lives with his wife Kerry Ann and their two sons. Hayden, who's 10, and eight-year-old Austin in Norfolk. John and Kerry Ann were teenage sweethearts. We met at school. Yeah. We met um, 1993, and we've been together ever since then. We had lots of laughs. We still have lots of laughs. That's what's great. Lots of hassles, but we do have lots of laughs. And then 9-11 happened, and the whole world sort of turned upside down, really. The terrorist attacks on the World Trade Center killed nearly 3,000 people. One of the victims was a close friend of John's. Well, her, her name was Carly. She was a friend of the family. And, you know, we were very close. She was a lovely, lovely person. It, it did hit him hard, really. It did hit him hard. Losing Carly wasn't the only tragedy to befall the family. Just over a year after 9-11, my mother suffered a a very serious stroke. And then in the March following that, I had a miscarriage. That was really, really hard as well. Deeply trying years took their toll, 